Hello, everybody. My name is Sylvain Rochon, and uh, well, I'm getting people to expand their human experience using cutting edge technology. And today, we're going to be talking about gene editing techniques, specifically new applications of gene editing techniques in general uh, to cure cancer and potentially other pretty nasty diseases. Uh, it's been an exciting year, year and a half, or two years uh, since the CRISPR, um, you know, Cas9 complex was. Uh, kind of discovered and it started coming out and lots of companies started investing and lots of people uh, got involved in research and funding the um, development of that gene editing tool that allows us to essentially correct a gene inside a cell even even in a living body for example and uh, there's been a lot of refinement there's a lot of discussion and uh, and is ov obviously a lot of uh, a lot of companies and labs have been spending a lot of time trying to figure out new ways and being creative in treating various diseases and cancer is obviously at the top of the list uh because well it kills a lot, kills a lot of people i believe the statistic is that about 30 percent of people will have cancer of some form during during their lives and that's because as we progress we're exposed with, with all sorts of radiation all sorts of chemicals some of it nasty and also our uh, our systems become with age less and less adept at uh, preventing mutations in our dna and some mutations make a discoloration discoloration of the skin for example as we age other mutations may cause a an uncontrollable duplication of cells which is by definition cancer uh, and uh, some of them are benign, as in they won't cause any serious harm. So sometimes they're just removed or, or, or left as is. I think most of them uh, are undiscovered because they don't cause any issues. And uh, those that, are, that we call malignant, those that do cause serious harm, sometimes ki kill people, actually very, uh, still often kill people. And so these are genetic diseases that are essentially personalized to the individuals that have them because these are mu select not, not selective mutations but random mutations that can be can happen in various different parts of the cell to cause that effect and each, each person is different each mutation is different so you can't really uh, treat cancer except by surgery nowadays or chemotherapy which is a blanket let's kill everything that's not perfectly fine uh, kind of treatment and uh, which makes you uh, immensely sick but there are certain things that happen uh, when cancer emerges as just cancer cells for example you have new antigens that appear on the surface these are proteins that are specific to that to, to that cancer because of the mutation itself so if there's a mutation you have these new antigens that appear uh, on, on the cell that uh, that the immune system can be uh, sensitive to but that aren't present in normal cells that are healthy so uh, labs like y y you're, you're going to see links in my blog uh, labs have been able to find strategies to um, for personalized treatment of either uh, by either gene editing T cells of the specific patient uh, to attack the uh, the cancer cells that are that are uh, that is occurring in the body, or by uh, playing around with the new antigens they d they discovered that are specific to the cancer, reintroducing them into the body, uh, so that the, uh, in such a way that the immune system will for sure react to it and kill the new antigens as well as the attached cancer cells. So these these are really cool technologies that allow us to. Uh, eventually eradicate or at least uh, have very very good treatments uh for cancer of all types that may that may appear in everybody at any point in time without using strong chemicals and and, and harming the other cells and uh, we've even uh been able to uh to to do genetic gen editing on embryos for the first time so that we can cure uh, potential problems, cancer or otherwise, in, uh, in in people that are at the embryonic level, so before the baby is fully grown and suffering from something. So this is all very exciting. However, there's always the question. This is these are driven by economic uh, drivers, right? For the most part, uh, people want to build businesses about it, uh, around it, make money by selling the treatment. Which it's great for cancer as far as the how the how the economy works because cancer will 
these are not cures for ca to prevent you from having cancer. They're cures for when you do. And lots of people do have cancer. So there's a lot of economic incentive to actually do that, that kind of research. Uh, but financial incentives also means that some companies will try to minimize the kind of steps taken to deploy a treatment. And, uh, and gene editing is so new that there is no real good regulation on, on how to, uh, to manage the actual deployment of treatments. Like we don't want to block or slow down deployment of treatments, but we want to make sure that, that we don't cure something like a, a cancer today and, and we, we develop like deeper long-term problems for, for individuals in the long term. And uh, companies that want to make a, a, a buck don't necessarily think very, very long term. They think about the short term profitability. So DARPA uh, received $65 million in funding recently. This is in the States uh, to develop. And this is for laboratories to develop processes that allow greater control of gene editing l in living systems. Develop countermeasures that protect genome in integrity in populations so that, uh, of course, we don't have long term you know, problems with genomes because remember DNA is passed along, right? So if we, if we edit genes in the wrong way, you pass those problems along to your offspring too. And also to investigate a way to remove engineered genes from living systems. And the purpose of if it all is really smart, I like it, is to create a, like a process for pretty much every gene editing company or, or treatment out there that allows them to, to do the, what they're supposed to do properly you do the appropriate research in such a way that you can make the edit and if something happens you can erase the edit kind of uh rewind so to speak and go back to the state of uh, where it was in a safe way that way if there is a uh a, a kind of a result later on that you couldn't anticipate even if a few years into the future, you can always, if there's a proper process for gene editing, you can re-edit back and rewind that problem and bring it back the way it was and possibly try again. And this is really good. It's still in line with, uh, with excellent science. Uh, and uh, I, I believe that the, the purpose here is to, to make those, whatever's, whatever development uh, th these labs are going to... Uh, to uncover along with possibly other labs, uh, they are going to regulate and, and, and possibly um, install some rules on how to do research and, and what can be deployed into the population uh, and, and things like that as far as treatments are concerned. Because we do want to protect the population. It's great to have a treatment, but if it's rushed out of the door without long-term long uh, thought processes, then you're stuck with the new genes, and then you, you may need a new gene, edi gene editing technique to undo some of the errors that were done elsewhere in the genome, and so on and so forth, and it can be very, very deadly, in fact. Um, so, very cool uh, progress. I, I hope they move very fast, because the, this field is moving crazy fast, uh, but it is thumbs up as far as for, for essentially curing everything that uh, we may think of. Uh, these technologies are game changers for our health uh, over everything you can imagine. Every ailment you can imagine, using gene editing techniques, uh, you, can, uh, you can help very specifically without using chemicals that would be strong. So you're talking about curing more than treating in, in, in most of those cases, which is what we want as a population. All right, so that's it for, uh, for today. I hope that uh, it's been good. My blog talks a little bit more about these, these different treatments and you have the links as well in there for the different labs that are doing different things. So you can check that out. If you like what you hear, what you hear here, <laughs> you can subscribe, share at will, do everything you need. Uh, let's spread the word. Let's make sure that these sciences keep moving forward, but with good oversight so that we don't get screwed later. All right, so that's going to be it, and uh, have a good week. I'll see you next week for another installment with, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, maybe computers? Who knows? See you next week. <laughs>